This is the fifth video for the Ethics and Legal Considerations part of the Animal Chiropractic class. In this video, we're going to talk about supervision and how to determine how much supervision is required for a person who's not licensed as a veterinarian to adjust animals. One of the difficulties in this area is that many statutes and regulatory schemes do not include any definition of supervision. The idea of supervision is actually much vaguer than you might think it might be. Just in general, the statutes or the regulations that do talk about the different types of supervision identify three basic types of supervision. The least restrictive type of supervision is called indirect or general supervision. And that means that the person providing the supervision is available to communicate. They don't have to be on the premises. They don't need to be observing what's going on. They just need to be available typically by telephone if there is any kind of difficulty or if there are questions that come up. The next level of supervision, which is a little more restrictive, is direct supervision. And it requires that the person providing the supervision be present on the premises they need to be readily available to uh, uh, provide help uh, if necessary or, or to communicate if necessary. Immediate supervision is the most restrictive level of supervision. And generally, I think it requires that the person supervising be almost looking over the shoulder of the person performing the work. The supervisor needs to be available to intervene immediately if anything were to go wrong or if there were to be any issues about how the care was being provided. Here's an example of a definition of indirect supervision out of Alabama. Uh, the veterinarian is not on the premises, but is given either written or oral instructions for the treatment of the animal patient and the animal has been initially examined by a veterinarian. One thing that I think is pretty typical is that the veterinarian must perform an examination of the animal. There must be a valid uh, veterinary client patient relationship before the veterinarian can supervise treatment of that animal. So this indirect supervision does not require that the veterinarian be on the premises. Alabama's code also defines direct supervision. This means the veterinarian is on the premises and is quickly and easily available and the animal has been initially examined by the veterinarian and examined by the veterinarian at other times as medical practice requires consistent with the delegated animal health care task. Um, again there's an emphasis in, in this definition that the veterinarian must be involved in the treatment of the animal even though the veterinarian may not be involved in this particular procedure. Alabama then goes on to define immediate supervision which means the veterinarian is in audible and visual range of the animal patient and the person treating the patient. This means essentially in the same room as the animal and the person treating the patient. Arkansas has a similar definition of immediate supervision. It means a veterinarian's direct observation of, with the opportunity to advise or intervene in, each veterinary chiropractic procedure. So how much supervision is required? Now those Alabama definitions I put out there just for example. Arkansas actually requires immediate supervision. The chiropractors practicing animal chiropractic must be licensed to practice chiropractic and they must be certified by the AVCA and the veterinarian must be providing immediate supervision. If the veterinarian is not providing immediate supervision, then the veterinarian is opening themselves up to liability for helping the chiropractor to practice uh, without a license. Now, Arkansas, I believe, is the only state that requires a chiropractic license, AVCA certification, and immediate supervision. That is, in my opinion, very restrictive and makes it very difficult to practice animal chiropractic. Uh, Texas has a different rule, 
that I think is much more uh, conducive to people practicing chiropractic. The veterinarian providing supervision must have a valid veterinarian client patient relationship. The veterinarian must have examined the animal to confirm that animal chiropractic will not be harmful. And the veterinarian must have an acknowledgement from the owner or the client that chiropractic is an alternate therapy. Uh, I think one thing that chiropractors can do in, in working in, in states like Texas is to help the chiropractor or help the veterinarian rather document their file. The veterinarian should be getting that acknowledgement on their own, but the chiropractors can also get that acknowledgement and provide a copy to the veterinarian so that if the veterinarian happens to forget, they still have that documentation in their file. The level of supervision required in Texas is direct or general supervision. General supervision is essentially indirect supervision. It means the veterinarian is available to communicate. Direct supervision, as we talked about before, means the veterinarian is physically present on the premises, not necessarily in the same room and not necessarily ready to immediately intervene, but at least on the same premises. So either one of these levels of supervision is adequate. So generally in Texas, if a veterinarian refers a patient to a chiropractor, assuming the veterinarian has examined the animal and has a valid uh, veterinary client patient relationship with that animal, then that's going to be sufficient to provide general supervision. New Mexico allows animal chiropractic only under the direct supervision of a licensed veterinarian. Their regulation then goes on to define direct supervision. The veterinarian must have a valid veterinarian client patient relationship. Treatment must be performed on the order of a licensed veterinarian. And the veterinarian must be on the premises and readily available and the veterinarian assumes liability for the quality of the treatment performed. And the last piece is the fee must be paid to the veterinarian. So this requires much more supervision or a higher level of supervision than what Texas requires. And the reason I point this out to you is not so you know the rules in Texas and the rules in New Mexico, but so that you know what you're looking for when you look at your state's rules. If you see that direct supervision is required, Look and see how the rules define direct supervision so you can check all these boxes. I think it's helpful to create a checklist, uh, both for the veterinarians and the chiropractors, to be sure you're meeting all the requirements uh, of the statute or the regulations in your state. Uh, Kentucky is very restrictive about who can treat animals and about who veterinarians can delegate to. Uh, generally, veterinarians can delegate to veterinary assistants and veterinary technicians only. And direct supervision is required for most procedures which might be provided by a veterinary assistant or technician. California also includes the definition or includes musculoskeletal manipulation within the definition of veterinary medicine and makes it clear that that's regulated by the veterinary board and requires a license. Uh, animal chiropractic may only be performed in California by a veterinarian who has examined the animal, has assumed responsibility, has discussed animal chiropractic with the owner, is readily available to perform follow-up evaluation if an adverse reaction occurs and has assigned acknowledgement from the client uh, that animal chiropractic is understood as an alternative veterinary therapy. So even veterinarians are restricted somewhat in the way that they can provide animal chiropractic in California. California also allows chiropractors to perform animal chiropractic only if it's provided under the supervision of a veterinarian 
and the veterinarian must meet the requirements in the previous section. So there must be an examination and a consultation. The veterinarian must be on the premises and the veterinarian is responsible to maintain complete records. That brings up another point I want to remind you about. As a chiropractor providing animal chiropractic under supervision, I think it's very helpful to provide copies of your documentation to the supervising doctor and to deliver those copies within a reasonable time after you provide the care. That helps the supervising doctor maintain a complete file and helps the supervising doctor see that you're providing competent and good care for the animals that they are referring to you. Uh, I think this is common sense, but California also provides that once the veterinarian terminates the relationship with the chiropractor, the chiropractor can't continue to provide this animal uh, chiropractic under that supervision. If a chiropractor fails to confirm, not only are they liable under for unlicensed practice of veterinary medicine, they could be liable for under the Chiropractic Act for unprofessional conduct. And veterinarians who fail to follow the rules could be liable for unprofessional conduct. So that brings us to Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma, as I mentioned earlier, is, is the only state that allows chiropractors to treat animals without supervision. And it's not all chiropractors who can do that, but only certified chiropractors. And the way the act does that is the statute says the Veterinary Practice Act does not prohibit chiropractors licensed in Oklahoma who are certified to engage in animal chiropractic. And the certification in Oklahoma has been uh, certification by the AVCA. Chiropractors who are not licensed or who are licensed in Oklahoma but are not certified to practice animal chiropractic may provide treatment only if the animal is referred by a licensed veterinarian. Personally to me, this kind of regulatory scheme makes sense. Remember, the purpose of these regulations or the general purpose is to protect the public and to protect the animals. If a chiropractor is properly trained, there really is no reason to require supervision or even close supervision by a veterinarian. The chiropractor needs to remember that they're responsible to identify conditions that might need veterinary treatment and to refer the client and the patient to a licensed veterinarian if that is the situation. And it also makes sense that chiropractors or other laypersons who are not veterinarians should be allowed to provide animal chiropractic if the licensed veterinarian is providing appropriate supervision or making a referral for that treatment. Uh, some states have adopted regulations that seem to provide a little less supervision. Uh, Nevada provides that animal chiropractic cannot be practiced except by licensed veterinarians or chiropractors who are registered with the uh, uh, Nevada board. The chiropractors who are registered may practice chiro animal chiropractic only under the direction of a veterinarian and only if the chiropractor assumes liability for the quality of the animal chiropractic performed. Now note that's different from the rule in New Mexico which says the veterinarian provided the supervision has to assume liability for the quality of the care. But in this case the chiropractor or in Nevada the chiropractor is actually responsible for the quality of that care. The veterinarian's not required to supervise during the animal chiropractic, so this is only general supervision. And the veterinarian's not liable for any mistakes that may be made by the chiropractor. Uh, Nevada also includes some rules for record keeping. Now I think all the states are going to have rules for record keeping that apply to veterinary practices. Again, for the chiropractors, it is advisable for you to become familiar with those rules. The rules may spell out the contents that are required for the records, spell out when the records can be released, 
may spell out how long the records need to be maintained. It may spell out when the records need to be created. Uh, complying with those rules if you're working with veterinarians can be a very important part of establishing your credibility as a capable professional. In Nevada, the records must be maintained for at least four years after the treatment is discontinued. Uh, within 48 hours after the initial visit, uh, records should be sent to the veterinarian who is supervising the care. And within 48 hours after each following visit, those records should be sent again to the veterinarian who is supervising the care. And obviously the reason for that is to make sure the veterinarian supervising the care is aware of what's going on with the animal. Uh, Nevada's rules also include specific rules or specific list of what needs to be included in those records. Uh, name, address, and phone number of the owner, uh, name or identifying number of the animal, etc. Um, be sure you document the diagnosis and treatment plan. Be sure you document the progress and disposition of the case. Uh, Minnesota also has a procedure for chiropractors to register as animal chiropractors. Um, criteria for the registration includes AVCA certification. The Minnesota rules require that records be kept for three years and require that treatment notes be made available to the client if they ask. And the chiropractor providing treatment must communicate the findings to the referring veterinarian. Uh, Minnesota does allow animals and humans to be treated in the same facility, but requires a sign be posted to inform customers that animals and humans are treated in that facility. Personally, I think animals and humans should be treated in different facilities, uh, but it, if they are treated in the same facility, I think it's only fair to notify everybody of that situation. Uh, Colorado also has a procedure to register animal chiropractors. And the registered chiropractors may provide treatment when the diagnosis and treatment is consistent with the scope of practice for chiropractors and the animal has a veterinary medical clearance. So that doesn't require much supervision by the veterinarian, but it does require at least an initial examination and a valid veterinary client patient relationship. Chiropractors who are not registered as animal chiropractors may still be able to provide animal chiropractic care, but the level of supervision is increased to direct on-premises supervision. So the veterinarian has to be on the same premises while the care is being provided. Uh, someone who is not licensed as a chiropractor or a veterinarian is not allowed to perform animal chiropractic in Colorado. Again, that's a rule that makes sense to me. Somebody who is providing animal chiropractic care should have some appropriate training. Uh, both veterinarians and animal chiropractors have enough information or, or, or information to provide better quality care for those animals. Uh, the rules then go on to talk about the records and professional collaboration in Colorado. The veterinarians who provide clearance uh, may require that a veterinarian be present when chiropractic treatment is provided. So even though it's not required by the regulation, it's at the veterinarian's discretion. The chiropractor and the veterinarian must collaborate together for the well-being of the animal patient, and that must continue. Uh, and again, the records must be kept for three years in Colorado. Uh, disciplinary actions. Uh, separate treatment rooms and use of titles. Um, complaints are handled like other complaints. The separate treatment room, uh, animals and uh, human patients should not be treated in the same rooms. And again, that makes sense for purposes of safety. You don't want humans being hurt by animals. And because some people have very uh, 
strong reactions, allergic reactions to animal dander. It just doesn't make sense to expose them to that unnecessarily. Uh, Colorado also limits uh, the use of titles like animal chiropractor, animal adjuster, equine chiropractor, or equine adjuster um, to those chiropractors who are registered as animal chiropractors. So if nothing else, I hope you understand that the regulations about supervision are anything but clear. The idea of supervision all by itself may seem very instinctive and very natural to you, but I think the way the boards define it in their regulations and the level of supervision that's appropriate varies from state to state. So remember, Arkansas requires immediate supervision, even though the, the chiropractor is certified by the AVCA, but some other states, uh, like Colorado, require nothing more than a referral uh, as long as the chiropractor has examined the patient and cleared them for chiropractic care. So the next question I want to talk about is what qualifications are appropriate before someone provides animal chiropractic care? Uh, most states do not require, I'm sorry, let's talk about first veterinarians then we'll talk about chiropractors and laypersons. Uh, for veterinarians, most states, actually all states except for Oklahoma, do not require any kind of additional training or qualifications to provide animal chiropractic care. But even though they don't have any specific requirements about animal chiropractic, I think most, if not all states, have a provision that it would be unprofessional conduct for a veterinarian to provide treatment when the veterinarian is not properly qualified and trained to provide that treatment. So a veterinarian who has had no training in chiropractic probably should not be providing animal chiropractic care. Oklahoma does require some additional uh, training for chiropractic, for veterinarians to provide animal chiropractic. Uh, they require a malpractice coverage policy and the statute requires appropriate training. Now, I think that appropriate training includes the ABCA certification. So the next question is what training should be appropriate for chiropractors? Which chiropractors should be allowed to work on animals? Generally, if the, if the chiropractic, excuse me, generally if the chiropractor is providing the care under the supervision of a veterinarian, there isn't going to be any requirement for any additional training. A few states make reference to AVCA or other certifications, including Arkansas, Mississippi, Nevada, and Utah. Uh, Oklahoma also requires certification, uh, and the AVCA training meets that certification requirement. It makes sense to me that chiropractors, just, just like veterinarians, should receive training in chiropractic before providing animal chiropractic. It makes sense to me that chiropractors should be receive training in working on animals before they provide animal chiropractic care. And then the last question is for laypersons. I think generally the states provide uh, no limitation for laypersons who are treating their own animals. Um, generally, the owner is allowed to do as they wish with their animal as long as it's not abuse. And laypersons, just like chiropractors, are generally going to be allowed to uh, um, treat animals under a veterinarian supervision. And that may include animal chiropractic care as well as other types of care. So the last idea I want to talk about here is the idea of adjusting animals and humans in the same clinic. As we went through the regulations, I made some references to these. The primary concern for me would be allergies. Uh, treatment rooms can be very difficult to clean thoroughly and completely. So if animals and humans are being treated in the same clinic, even if the same waiting room is being used, you run a risk that you may expose your patients or trigger allergies in your human patients that you wouldn't or shouldn't be doing. You also run a risk of injury to both patients and employees. 
Anytime animals are present around people who are not used to working with animals, sometimes the animals will, well, they act like animals. And if the people don't know how to respond or how to act appropriately around the animals, that can cause dog bites and other problems. The legal requirements are not very clear. Most states do not really anticipate or, or expect a situation where humans and animals are treated in the same clinic, so there's no specific rule. But for example, in Texas, there is a rule that provides its grossly unprofessional conduct to maintain an unsanitary or unsafe equipment or office. And certainly that would be appropriate or could be used if equipment in a room is used for treating animals and isn't cleaned properly before being used to treat uh, persons. Uh, Minnesota does have a specific rule, as I mentioned earlier, that the same table and equipment used for animals shall not be used for human patients. And Colorado also requires a separate treatment room tables and equipment. So this has been a fairly uh, lengthy uh, section of the video and I think relatively complex. But to sum it up, the supervision requirements, uh, some states have very clear supervision requirements. They spell out exactly what needs to be in place. If you're practicing in one of those states, again, I think it's helpful for, for both the veterinarians and the chiropractors to develop a checklist so they can approve or just, you know, confirm that they are meeting each one of the requirements of those state regulations. In the states where the regulations are not clear, which again is nearly every state, uh, chiropractors and veterinarians should look at the general rules that allow veterinarians to delegate to people who are not licensed, to technicians, to assistants, and to laypersons, and to follow those rules with respect to providing animal chiropractic care. As far as qualifications for providing adjustments, I think the regulations leave a lot to be desired. I think it would be very wise for the states as, as the animal chiropractic profession grows to evaluate what training is appropriate and to make sure that both the veterinarians and the chiropractors working on animals receive appropriate training before they have a chance to injure patients. Without that training, we may create a situation where people, excuse me, not people, where animals get injured unnecessarily and where that injury by animal chiropractic provided by unqualified persons damages the reputation of animal chiropractic. And lastly, just on a lighter note, I want to share these thoughts about dogs. Uh, you can read these on their own. On your own, they're, they're all pretty clear. Um, one of my favorites is Will Rogers. If there are no dogs in heaven, then when I die, I want to go where they went. And the other one is if your dog is fat, you aren't getting enough exercise.